Limerick's Magdalen Asylum had an orphanage attached. Some of the children were those of the penitents, but they were kept in strict isolation from their mothers. Bridget Young grew up there in the 1940s. We were not allowed to talk to the Magdalens. We weren't allowed to look at them. Um, no contact with them whatsoever because we were made to believe that they were very, very bad children. There were people who were devils, they were sinners. Any contact between the Magdalens and the orphans was forbidden. Whenever the beds were changed down in the orphanage. We took all the heavy linen up to the Magdalens, to the laundry, but the back gate was always locked. And when they would hear the trolley coming, one of them would actually come out and take the linen in. Well, this particular day, there was two of us, and we wheeled up the linen as usual. And there was a Magdalene standing at the back gate when we got there. She said to me, do you have a child down there by the name of Margaret Moore? And I said, yes, we do. She said, that's my child. And I don't know what she looks like. But I haven't seen her since she was a year old. So she was trying to make arrangements with me to bring this child up on top of the flat roof over the infirmary. And she would come out at the back gate if I would bring the child to the railings. And I agreed I would. But I got caught that same day. One of the nuns was coming out of the chapel she started clapping her hands and, you know, running and just flew over to the back gate of the Magdalene Laundry, just grabbed two of us by the ears, run us right down the hill, brought us into the Reverend Mother, and uh, the Reverend Mother took it from there. She asked us to wait in the back a uh, shed and she would be in to deal with us you know after that so we went into the back shed and she came in with a great big long rubber black rubber it wasn't a belt but it was something that she had specially made for the children to beat the children with and um, a scissors and an open razor. And she shaved both our heads and gave us a severe beat. And after she did that, she grabbed the two of us again and she made us look in the mirror to see what we had looked like after she had finished with us. And that's what happened. And I'll never forget what looked back at me. Totally devastating. Your forehead all swelled up, under my chin all bleeding, where she had stuck the scissors wide open. Um, the blood running into my eyes, my eyes totally closed, and she was making us open them eyes and look in that mirror, and you're not so pretty now, are you? I'll never forget that day. And this was just because talking to Magdalens, I was getting too friendly with the Magdalens.
priests made regular visits to the Magdalene asylums to conduct mass and take confession. Christina Mulcahy, having defied a nun's authority, had to seek further absolution for her sins. You're in a screen, you're inside a box, in a screen, and uh, when I said that I had something more to say, like that I wanted to sit, well, come round, come, come this side and, and sit here and, and tell me about it. And he was all exposed. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe... Well, I, I thought it'd be my word against him, you see. If I go and sell Sister Paul, would be the only one I could go to. And I, I, I told her. And uh, I was told to be quiet and not keep my mouth shut. I said, Sister Paul, why, do, why are you saying things like this to me? You think that I'm crazy in my head, that I didn't see this thing? He denied it straight away. I said, you're not a man of God. You really are not. And I said, I didn't want any more. And I, and I said, I wouldn't go to confession or, or go to church anymore. So I sat, I sat on the stairs and on a Sunday and wouldn't go. So the next thing was, they cut all my hair off. The punishment for Mary Magdalene was the model for the retribution meted out to the penitents. But having been accused of sexual impropriety, they were targets for abuse from their supposed moral tutors. Whenever you broke a rule like that, they always brought you to a priest to bless you. I was sitting in the parlour with them, and he, he was on one chair and I was at the other. And he talked away to me for a while. And then he started to move his seat towards me and wrap his two legs round my legs. And then he wrapped up his penis in a white handkerchief And then he was getting himself all worked up on top of me. And then at the end, he just came over and just masturbated all over my dress. And I just said to him, what's that? I didn't know what that was. I mean, I had been in that convent for... All them years, I never knew what sex was. Um, I've had no experience of males or females or whatever. And I was very confused of what was going on. And then it continued after that. He'd done it another three times after that, at the back of the main gate, before he said mess in the morning. If um, I had tried to talk about that to any of the nuns, I would have been a Magdalene. That's not something you would have spoke to the nuns about or any other child there. You just didn't talk and that was it. I was too frightened to talk because I didn't know what I was talking about anyway. I mean, I didn't... Although I knew what, was, what he'd done... But could I explain that in my own words? No. I couldn't explain that. I knew something wasn't right about the whole thing. And yet, oh, the nuns were the last people you could talk to. You couldn't do that. There seemed to be no escape from the Magdalene asylums and the orphanages attached to them. The penitents were virtual prisoners, unaware of their rights and without any sign of when or how they could leave. Many believed that their fate was to work in the laundries forever, and some remained there all their life. 
the nuns would say, oh, you've, your life isn't worth living now. You've, you've fell from grace and you've fell from, your respectability is gone and, and you better make your mind up to stay here for your life. And I would say, I, I've, I've got a baby and I'm going to go out. I'm going to get out of here and I don't care how I get out of here, but I'm going out of here. I will not stay in this place forever. Few did escape, but the walls were that high, you'd be cut to ribbons. There was like barbed wire. There was also iron spikes sticking out of the walls. You, it had to be planned. You couldn't just at the spur of the moment say, I'm going and go. There was one way the girls did escape. When the cattle were being brought in and driven by the old lady, they would sly out the side entrance as she was locking up the main gate. Maggie was letting the cows in, and as she 